There is some building works and heavy drilling going on outside, so I hope you can't hear any of that. Also, I got a new map. Do you like it? It's not actually a new map. I have many maps stored, rolled up in tubes, but I don't have a lot of wall space and my Peter's projection map just kept falling down. It is less of a political statement, but hopefully it will stay up. Greenland is not that big. It's a lie. Anyway, it is time for my May favourites. First of all, books. For the Banging Book Club this month, we read Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe, which is a YA book about two boys, Aristotle, Ari and Dante, who live in Texas and they're both from Mexican families. They're both Mexican. They're in their teens. They're like 15, I think, when the book starts. And it is about their friendship and about masculinity and sexuality and all that good stuff and it's just so beautiful. It's a love story and it's just gorgeous. I will leave a link in the description to the Banging Book Club podcast where we discuss this in full and if you are interested you can listen to that. In May I also read Sex at Dawn, How We Mate, Why We Stray and What It Means for Modern Relationships. Very long, very small writing, very academic but fascinating. But essentially these authors are arguing against what they call the standard narrative, which is that men naturally and biologically and for evolutionary reasons want to spread their seed into as many women as possible and women want to have um, the healthiest baby and the fittest baby and also to like improve that baby's chances of survival and so they are very selective with who they have sex with and are very protective and um pick some man for his resources and his strength and then they have a little nuclear family together and um, the man doesn't want her sleeping with anyone else to protect his paternal certainty that that child is his and he's not wasting his resources on someone else. And this book argues against it by saying that monogamy is not a natural human occurrence. There's a lot of flaws in their argument but it is still really interesting. I learned a lot about chimps and bonobos and other cultures around the world that do things differently to us that are living currently. I learned a lot about foraging societies before the advent of agriculture. There's a lot of stuff in here. It's like Meh. Currently I believe that pair bonding, so not necessarily m true monogamy in the sense that you have one partner for your whole life, but pair bonding is a very natural human experience where we want to connect with another human being. Um, that, I think, is very human. But on the flip side of it, I do think that promiscuity in terms of having multiple sexual partners and finding other people attractive and being sexually um, aroused or interested in others whilst you are also in a monogamous relationship, I also think that that is very natural and human. And I think that the pressure that we put on ourselves to be monogamous, not just in our actions but in our thoughts, often lead to a lot of resentment within a relationship. And maybe you have an open relationship so you can act on it, um, or maybe you still have a monogamous relationship but you're accepting and aware of the fact that your partner and yourself, you know, might have different sexual fantasies in your own private sex life and we shouldn't punish ourselves for these feelings that we get and we should be able to have an open dialogue with our partner about that and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're cheating or that you're in a bad relationship. Let me know your thoughts. My next favourite is sponsored and it is the new line of products by this new brand called Being by Sanctuary and oh my god I love them. I genuinely do. The packaging is so cool and it all smells so good. You may have seen some of the stuff on my Instagram but this is, this is some of it. Ah! They sent me a humongous box with the whole range and I've just been gradually dishing them out to friends like, here, you have some bubble bath, you have some body scrub. This is the body wash that I've been using, as you can see, I'm almost done. And it is the hibiscus and coconut water. And I just love all of these things, look. I just love them, they're so cool. I really love what this brand stands for. It's really feminist and all about just being bold, fearless women in the world and I love it. Um, you should go and check out their Instagram, there's loads of amazing pictures on there, I will link it in the description. Also if you head over to boots.com you will be able to see my curated list of my top five products. This is one of them for sure, chili mango and tonka bean body butter, oh my god, oh my god, oh. Their flavours, wait no they're not called flavours, scents. Their scents are so interesting, 
like oh my god the mix of them this one is the body scrub and it is salted caramel and macadamia what okay so i don't actually have the other two that are technically on my top five favorites list one of them is the bath bomb in this scent and the other one is the bubble bath in this scent the reason i don't have them is because i already used the bath bomb obviously like I used it. Um, it was the Water Lotus and Pomelo scent. And the reason why I don't have the Bubble Bath in the Cloudberry and Lychee Blossom scent is because it's at my boyfriend's house. Because I sometimes have baths there. Okay? Right? What's a woman got to do to have a bath around here? Also, Being have partnered with this youth charity called The Mix, which has loads of amazing help and support for young people in terms of sex and relationships, um, mental health, um, work and study and housing and all of these things. Definitely go and check them out and I think it's really cool that Being are supporting them. And I used to work for The Mix. So if you head over to The Mix's YouTube channel, there are videos of me, old ones from like two or three years ago. So you're welcome. But yeah, thanks so much to Being for all these amazing products and go check out their Instagram. <laughs> I'm really sweaty now. I think holding all those products is like a workout. <sighs> Next in my favorites is TV. Now I'm a bit behind on TV because I've been traveling a lot, mainly Master of None season two. That's the one thing that I haven't seen yet that I'm like, I need to see it. But The Handmaid's Tale has come to the UK. Channel four picked it up and now Channel four is airing the Handmaid's Tale. There's only one episode out so far and I literally watched it before filming this and oh, it's so good. There's only one thing in it that deviates from the books that I'm like, mm, don't like that. But the rest of it is just such a perfect adaptation. I'm like, yes, 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 yes. I'm really excited to see where they take it. And I think it is a really important show. If you take your reproductive rights for granted, watch The Handmaid's Tale. Or read it as well, the book is great. Next are all my travel faves from this month. Do I have a tan? Do I look tanned to you? Am I, did I, did I get brown? I don't, I don't know, I hope I did. So first of all, I went to Menorca for this press, blogger, vlogger, Instagrammer trip. You may have seen on my Instagram all of these hashtag must see Menorca pics because it was organized by the Spanish Tourism Board. And I went with my friends Callum and Melanie and loads of other people, new people who we met and made friends with and it was amazing. Just like a week in the sun, a nice mix of chilling out and like high activity, like doing loads of stuff. Kayaking was definitely my favorite. We went kayaking along the coast and into some caves and it was amazing. Also, another favorite, I got myself a GoPro so I could film whilst kayaking because this baby, the Hero 5, is waterproof. And I was just like doing water stuff. I mean, how did the footage come out? Who knows? What does this look like? Is it weird? I was experimenting with slow-mo. Oh, that's strange. Good work, Hannah, doing your GoProing, swimming, great. Anyway. I am a winner! One of the other things that I did whilst I was in Menorca was take loads of bikini pics and put them on my Instagram because it makes me feel good about my body. Loads of you guys were asking where I got my bikinis from because I gained some weight and needed to get new bikinis girls. My boobs did not fit into the other ones. All of my bras and bikinis from Bravissimo because there is no other place in the UK that sells bras that are my size. This is from Bravissimo and the brand is Miss Mandalay. Do -do -do, that's this one. And then this one also from Bravissimo and the brand is Clio. They're so big. Right after Menorca, I had 24 hours at home and then I went to Budapest with my parents and my sister for our family holiday. And it was amazing. I'd never been to Budapest before and it's such a cool city. We did so much, lots of eating and drinking and just walking around and exploring. I learned a lot about the history of Jews in Hungary. We went to the Great Synagogue and we went to the Holocaust Memorial Center and I got this little postcard. This is the memorial tree at the synagogue. So many Hungarian Jews died in the Holocaust and it wasn't the Nazis, it was the Hungarians. The Hungarians killed their own. This is very light for a favorites video. Ah, anyway, like learn history, it's important. Other quick favorites, I have been writing on my blog a lot more recently. You can go to hannahwitten.com and see things that I've been writing and rambling and talking about. It's a lot of fun. And my final favorite, although I don't know if I could call it a favorite, is the election campaign. 8th of June, go 
vote. Watch the Jeremy Paxman interviews, watch the leaders debate, just read as much as possible, learn about the parties and their policies, learn about the people standing in your constituency, who your local MP might be, um, and on the 8th of June, go and vote. Please, please vote. Most of my audience are 18 to 24 year olds, which is the demographic that is least likely to turn out and vote. Please prove the politicians wrong, like show them that we care. If we show them that we care and we show them that we turn out and that we participate in politics, then they will start listening to us. All right, gonna end this favorites video on a political call to action. I might make another video about the election before the vote, so let me know if that's something that you would want to see. Thank you so much for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and let me know in the comments anything that you've enjoyed this month that you reckon I should check out. And don't forget to subscribe because I make new videos every week. Bye.